Greetings and welcome to our series of weekly devotionals where we take a look at a lectionary reading and offer some thoughts for reflection. And this week, as we approach the Feast of Pentecost, we are looking at the familiar story of the Tower of Babel found in the book of Genesis. And speaking of the Old Testament, uh, at our recent spring conference meeting, uh, our theme was interfaith uh, partnerships, and we had several people from different uh, faiths other than Christianity joining us for our time of worship and some workshops, and one of them was a rabbi who taught us a few things about Judaism that perhaps we didn't know. And he uh, bristled at the uh, suggestion uh, that the Hebrew Bible is the Old Testament. Uh, as he said, uh, this is, is something that is living and breathing uh, new insights into uh, those who read it every day. Of course, in the religion of Judaism, uh, it is not considered the Old Testament, but simply the Scriptures, the Hebrew Bible, and of course, there's a few other uh, holy, sacred texts that are that are read and and uh, and examined and interpreted and discussed. As as the rabbi said, when you have uh, two Jews, you have three opinions. So, uh, one of the things that he, he stressed in Judaism, they like to discuss and debate and chew over Scripture so that new insights emerge. And so far from being an Old uh, Testament, these stories are living and breathing and new each and every day. And, and sometimes we Christians think of, of these stories as an Old Testament in that, uh, you know, the God of the Old Testament was, was a wrathful, judgmental God, and then, you know, the New Testament came along, Jesus and the Gospels, and then God became all warm and fuzzy and loving. And we interpret a lot of the stories uh, in the Hebrew Bible through the lens of the Gospels and through the sort of what we consider to be the fulfillment of those scriptures in the, the life and the message of Jesus Christ. Uh, but we have to remember a few things uh, about the Hebrew Bible. Uh, First of all, it contains a story of creation, uh, the story that we are all created in God's image and, and that it was very good, God's unconditional love for each and every one of us. Um, of course, uh, most, if not all, of the, the teachings of Jesus are directly sourced from the Hebrew Bible. Those were the scriptures, in fact, that Jesus used and taught from. And, and, and Jesus' famous commandment to love God and love neighbor is uh, quoting Leviticus and Deuteronomy books in the Hebrew Bible. And the, the, one of the main themes of our denomination, the United Church of Christ, is covenant. That's how we relate to one another in covenant. And that story of covenant begins back in the story of Noah, uh, through to Abraham, then to Moses, and, and through the prophets, and then finally on to, to Jesus in the New Testament. Uh, so, a lot of our faith is, is, has its roots in the Hebrew Bible. And these stories in the Hebrew Bible, I think, stand on their own, really, without any help from the New Testament. And I mentioned yesterday that sometimes we interpret the story of the Tower of Babel as being sort of reversed by uh, the story of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes down in the book of Acts. But actually, a more accurate counterpoint to the story would be the giving of the name of Abraham later in the book of Genesis, because in this story, the Tower of Babel, humanity wants to make a name for themselves. But then in the story of Abraham, God gives the name. And so a new way, perhaps, of thinking about this story might be that it's a contrast between uh, putting ourselves in the place of highest priority or putting God in the place of highest priority which, when you think about it, is a very old lesson, uh, but is a choice that is presented new to us each and every day. Amen.